All right, good morning. Uh, this is an uncovered event. The, during the playing of the national anthem, all soldiers uh, will stand in uniform, will stand at the position of attention. It's a no saluting event. Additionally, uh, it is appropriate for all civilians, uh, civilian personnel, to place their right hand on their heart. Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Brigadier General Andrew Collins, the Deputy Adjutant General of Maryland, we welcome you to the ribbon cutting for the Camp Frederick Re Military Reservation Athletic Field and Major Robert Marchenti Fitness Center uh, retrofit. Please, please uh, rise and remain standing for the national anthem. You may take your seats. Today's official party consists of Brigadier General Andrew W. Collins, Commanding Army National Guard, Colonel Juan T. Bryant, G3, Maryland Army National Guard, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Willey, Deputy G3, Maryland National Guard. <clears throat> also for distinguished guests, we have Colonel Matthew Denena, Chief of Staff, Maryland National Guard, and um, Colonel Johnson, our incoming IG. The Camp Frederick Military Reservation Athletic Field has been upgraded to support the Army Combat Fitness Test Program. This included removal of the inner ballards, excavation of the field, and to add some, some stone drainage layers, followed by installation of synthetic turf, uh, as well as um, the track. The turf will be lined for football, soccer, and include marting, markings for turnaround points for the ACFT splint, sprint drag carry. The existing pull-up bars uh, have been relocated on the outside side of the track, along with concrete slabs with three-inch high impact rubber, which is installed for the, uh, the deadlift exercise. Completion of this effort uh, has enabled the Maryland Army National Guard to conduct the ACFT in a state-of-the-art environment, which permits soldiers to conduct the test safely while maximizing their opportunity to perform the peak during the test. This project was originally awarded on July 1st of 2023 and was actually completed ahead of schedule and available for use of May of 2024, while projected not until July 12th of 2024. Additionally, the Major Marchenti uh, Fitness Center was originally put for schedule in July of 2023 was work began on March of 2023 and is a correction 24 and June of 24 also more than a month ahead of schedule. The cost for the uh, track exceeded over two million dollars. The cost for the gym be uh, beaver fit and equipment was over five hundred thousand dollars and the HVAC richer fit was over six hundred fifty thousand dollars. The Maryland Department of General Services is responsible for contracting administration uh, and the construction of this project Brutus and Associates were the designer of record for the track. Urban Zinc was the uh, contract constructor, or excuse me, the, contra the construction contract. And Mr. Albert Schweitzer was the project manager from the Maryland Army National Guard Construction and Facility Maintenance Office. Beaver Fit was the supplier of all of the equipment uh, in the building you see now. We want to give some special thanks uh, and recognition to DJS, to Mr. Ben Wood, Mr. Jeff Ford, Mr. Jeffrey Chance, Mr. Russell Will, uh, Miller, 
for uh, urban zinc construction. We would like to recon recognize Mr. Matt Roach, Mr. Adam Zink, Mr. Chris Zellman, Mr. Mike Arnold. From Brutus and Associates, we would like to recognize uh, Mr. Patel. And from within our own CFMR facilities, we'd like to recognize Mr. James Bonner and Mr. James Kaufman. I would now like uh, to invite uh, Lieutenant Colonel Willie for some, mar some words and remarks. All right. I'll try to stay on script here. All right, uh, today is very special for a few reasons. Uh, it personally touches on a unique story arc in my career. I served as a commander and full-time supervisor of the Maryland Army National Guard Training Center from 2014 to 2016. Uh, during that time frame, we supported the Major Mar uh, Robert Marchanti facility dedication ceremony, and we also pursued the initial programming for the HVAC project. I, at that time, wanted this facility to honor our fallen hero, not only in, in, not in just name only, but in every respect. Uh, we experienced several delays and challenges along the way, but we finally completed the HVAC upgrade in, in late 2023. Concurrently, we completed the ACFT artificial turf field conversion in early 2024. While in G3, in 2023, we also pursued the funding for the conversion of the gym into a soldier performance readiness center, seeking these upgrades to support the Army combat fitness test and enhance the holistic health and fitness initiatives. Today's ceremony is also special because these projects represent a direct investment in all our soldiers, those serving and those yet to serve in our ranks. It demonstrates an enduring commitment to our, our warriors' health, fitness, safety, morale, welfare, and recreation. I know that uh, Major Marchanti, being very fitness-minded and a heavy power lifter, would have loved what we achieved in the work you see here today. This was truly an impressive team effort, and I'd like to take some time to thank a few folks that made this all possible. Uh, first and foremost, sir, thanks for green lighting this idea when we gave this sales pitch to you at the CR2C. Um, Major Mike Herpel and Sergeant First Chris Reynolds, who helped me navigate the funding and contracting. Sergeant First Class Hugh McCall, who operated our H2F program, and he formulated our approach to this uh, fitness readiness center. He is currently the BDOC NCO in Iraq, and he's in our thoughts and prayers for a safe return. Uh, Mr. Sam Ho uh, Hovig and his entire team at BeaverFit, uh, thanks for delivering such a quality product and service. And this is where I'm going to go off script. Uh, the BeaverFit rig that you see behind you was actually uh, custom designed for us for this facility. Uh, this is not an in-stock kind of product. Everyone is manufactured specifically for its facility and fabricated. And when the fabrication team that built it heard that this was going to a facility for a fallen warrior, they made that metal flag uh, inscribed with Major Marchanti as a gift. Um, so I thought that was kind of a nice contribution to the, uh, to the facility uh, by those, those craftsmen. Sergeant so Major James Fleming and Master Sergeant Paul Fotheringham, they both helped lead the team efforts in the redistribution of old equipment. Uh, the removal of the old flooring prep, and we repainted the, uh, the walls of the facility. Captain Logan Yox, Sergeant First Class Brandon Kennedy, Sergeant First Class Ram Castudio, Staff Sergeant Brett R uh, Richardson, and Staff Sergeant John Castillo. This group made up the inexhaustible muscle behind all the heavy work. Major Hartline and your entire team uh, for supporting the project all along the way and organizing today's event. Mr. Jason Coughlin and your entire team, thank you for all your support. Uh, Mr. Dave Andrews, uh, thanks for all your guidance and assistance. They were crucial and much appreciated. Uh, Mr. Mark Freedy, as always, you are a consummate professional. To all the soldiers of Joint Force Headquarters, the G6 and the MedDet that helped along the several phases of the project, we sincerely thank you for all your efforts. And in that, hopefully no one needed the med debt to process any hernia LOD paperwork. In closing, uh, both the track upgrade and this gym conversion were really fun projects to execute. I hope they inspire our junior leaders to champion the ways and means to improve our facility and our organization. I look forward to seeing all the members of our organization using both facilities for years to come, improving their individual readiness, 
to meet the demands of our state and nation, warrior fit, and leaders up front. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Colonel Willie. Would now like to invite uh, Brigadier General Collins for your comments. All right, uh, so good morning, everybody. Um, appreciate everyone coming out today. You know, um, it's a beautiful day. It's uh, absolutely gorgeous. We have lots of rain, and with that Army adage of, you know, if it ain't raining, we ain't training. Well, here we are in the perfect setting with the, uh, the track that we got outside and the gym we have right here. Um, you know, there's, there's goodness and badness when you have a phenomenal team, especially a phenomenal officer like Lieutenant Colonel Willie, uh, who precedes you in comments and basically, you know, stole all of my thunder. But that's perfectly fine, because now I can take my comments and throw them to the side and uh, just talk a little bit uh, um, about this project. Um, First and foremost, I just want to thank all of the, the guests, special guests that we have with us today. Thank you all for coming, uh, DGS, and all of the folks that made this, uh, uh, this project happen. Um, in particular, um, one of the individuals I'd like to recognize, um, and I, I will tell you, he, um, he talked a little bit about everyone that contributed to this, uh, but I will tell you it would not have happened without the foresight and um, uh, just the magnificent work that Lieutenant Colonel Willie does every single solitary day. So this is, this is something that's been thought about for a very long time. We, when I was a Lieutenant Colonel, Deputy G3, um, I remember uh, Colonel Sullins, we were talking about how to make upgrades in here and we could never seem to get it to happen, whether it be due to funding or timelines and things of that nature, it just didn't quite uh, get it to where we wanted it to be. Um, fast forward to today. I had Lieutenant Colonel Willie come to me uh, during one of our meetings uh, a little over a year ago and said, hey, I got this uh, idea, this concept. Because if we were coming to the end of the year and we had some end of, end of year money that we had available, um, and a lot of times it, take, it takes a lot of effort to get something to the goal line, he had already done the work. The work was already done. He, he had already figured out on what we needed to do and how we could get there quickly. Uh, and we were able to rapidly execute those funds um, get our team, um, DGS and everyone else to, to come together to get this project to come to fruition. And uh, ultimately this, this project, you know, it really serves two purposes. And he kind of highlighted a little bit about that already. And, and the first one is um, for our soldiers, right? Uh, we have to make sure our soldiers are physically fit to respond both to our state and our nation when, when called upon. And um, with the advent of the ACFT, a facility like this is absolutely needed and required. Um, and, and so for that, for that reason alone, it really, really means a lot to have this project finally completed. And the second thing is uh, for remembering Major Marshanti and the officer that he was and the legacy that he left behind. Um, it's, it's deeply, I'm deeply honored to be here for this ribbon cutting ceremony and, and, this, and, and the enhancements that we've done here our testament to the hard work he did while he was here with us. And uh, this will be an enduring legacy um, on, his, on his behalf. So thank you to everyone for making this happen. I'm really looking forward to, uh, uh, to get to the next step, which is cutting this ribbon. Uh, but before we do, I do know that there was um, soldiers in here previously that were working out before we got to the ribbon cutting, but it really doesn't count until the ribbon is cut. So for that, I'm going to be the first one to do a deadlift. Uh, thank you, General Collins. And that was an uh, outstanding form, especially for, uh, for a senior leader in our state. Come on now. I wasn't being sarcastic, sir. I was saying it was good form. Um, I would now like to invite the official party to come participate in the ribbon cutting ceremony. <laughs> 